everybody. Happy New Year. Um, hope you guys had a wonderful start to your new year. And I'm no, I'm looking forward to lots of positive things this year, you know, Lord willing. So I wish that for you as well. Anyway, so for New Year, we really didn't do a lot. And when I say we, I mean me. I stayed home. The girls, Tariq worked. The girls, they actually went to one of their friends from church. He had a, like a, I always want to say youth, but young adult. That's what they call them in our church when they're a certain age, age range. They call them young adults. And then youth is usually like um, teenagers. So anyway, he had a bunch of his friends over for New Year's and that's how they celebrate it. That was that. And then I was at home and I was cooking the cabbage and the black eyed peas. I basically do it because of tradition, not because of the superstitions that comes along with it. I did that and I was at home and I actually fell asleep. I didn't make it till midnight. I wasn't trying to. I'm sitting here on the couch. All of a sudden I started hearing fireworks and sound like bombs going off outside because people were doing their celebrations, whatever. And I looked at the phone and it said 1201. And I'm like, okay, happy new year to me. So I went to bed and then the girls got home around 1.30. So that's how I spent my New Year's Eve, not doing much at all. Yeah, so I will show you guys the footage of me going to the store and getting the things for the food that I made. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday morning. It is 7 a.m., you guys, and I'm up and dressed. I'm on my way to Winco. I got such good sleep last night and I know I didn't give you guys an update on my new machine that I'm using, but I feel almost 100% normal. I am struggling a little bit with the pressure settings and my sleep doctor said that the best thing to do is to go in and do an actual sleep study, which is what I was trying to avoid. But because I know this CPAP machine, well now that I have the BiPAP machine, it's really good for me. It's making me feel 100% better. With the CPAP machine, it was like continuous air pressure, right? On a certain pressure. And it makes sure you don't have any apneas at night. And then the BiPAP machine, I thought it was just a machine that goes higher in pressure, which it does. But in addition to that, when you breathe in, it's one pressure and you breathe out, it's another pressure. It like lessens the pressure a little bit so it makes it easier. So that has been wonders for me, but I'm still struggling a little bit as far as the pressure. He's adjusted it a few times, which they can do remote, but to get the ultimate effect, I'm gonna actually have to go in for a sleep study at Kaiser which is what I was trying to avoid because I'd rather do it at home. And I feel that this is really weird today. I don't know, it looks, the footage looks grainy on my end. I'm vlogging from my phone. Maybe I just need to clean it. I don't know. Let me see if that will help. Did it? I don't know. So I'm gonna actually go in because they have more equipment that they can check me with. I'm gonna have to be like, putting all the things on my chest and then he said some stuff on my hair so not on my hair but on my scalp so when the time comes as much as I'm able to show you guys that night I will but so far this is a good change for me so I don't know with this machine I don't know if it's just because it's making me get like really really good sleep so when I wake up in the morning I feel refreshed and I just wanna get out of bed, I'm done. So I've been waking up early lately and actually getting up. And of course my kids won't let me be great and let that be the reason. They were saying, mom, it's because you're old. You know how old people don't need that much sleep. They just get up at the butt crack of dawn for no reason. Yeah, that's not right. I'm, I won't accept that. I'm accepting the fact that <laughs> I'm getting good sleep, I'm getting my full eight hours, and I'm feeling rested, and I'm getting up when I'm done. That's what I'm seeing it as. I got up and got dressed, and decided to come out to the store to, uh -oh, to go to Winco, because Winco gets crazy crowded and insane around the holidays, 
and especially around the first of the month what's today today's the 30th today's apollo's birthday you guys i think he's eight today so i texted faraji to tell him to tell apollo happy birthday so yeah i'll probably try to do like a video call with them later so yeah that um i'm just going off on all these little rants what was i saying Oh, because Winco gets crowded around the holidays and I wanted to avoid all that. And the best time to go, it's early in the morning. So it's early in the morning and I'm going to go do my not really grocery shopping, but get things that I'm going to make for the new year. Black eyed peas and cabbage. So, yeah, we're going to do that. Also get a few other things. And yeah. All right, let's go. Uh, like I like it. Here y'all go, cause you know I don't do grocery hauls. So this is what I'm getting. And the store is so empty. I am so loving this, you guys. Yay, you guys. In and out. I got everything I needed for my New Year's Eve meal. And did I tell you guys what I'm making? I think I did, black eyed peas and cabbage it's something that my family just did growing up and I guess it's supposed to be for prosperity in the new year and even though I don't believe superstitions like that it's just something cool that I still do from time to time because that's how I was raised so yeah got you guys I gotta figure out a better position to put this camera in because this is not now you can't see me <laughs> this is not that good okay and then after that, I didn't vlog anymore. And this is the first time I'm picking up the camera since the new year. I know, but there's some things going on, which I eventually will tell you guys, but I can't do it now. But yeah, anyway, today's Thursday. And the reason why I look like this is y'all know me. I, I try to keep it real, you know, but today I'm going to do a in-house sleep study I think that's what they call it at Kaiser the first one I did was here at home then I did another one here at home with the BiPAP machine that I got which you guys that machine works wonders for me but I'm having a little bit of trouble because it does go at a higher not a volume a higher pressure anyway so that machine is working out for me but my doctor keeps remoting into my machine trying to find that number that whatever that I need so it can be good for me because my apneas are going up at night since I got the new machine but he told me which he's the doctor so I'm going off based on him that machine's going to work out better for me and I actually think that it does because I have not been feeling sleepy throughout the day as much as I was when I had just the CPAP machine I mean I felt better but I still felt sleepy later on during the day. Now that I got this new machine, I pretty much can stay up and not feel that tiredness at six o'clock and or 6.30, 7 o'clock and ready to go to bed as like I did before. So I know that works out for me. So he said the best thing to do, which most people hate and I hate it too, is to do an in-house sleep study. And the way Kaiser does it is I have to be there at 7.30 tonight. And I asked her, I'm like, I'm expected to go to bed to go to sleep at 730 and she started laughing she said no we just check you in and you know there's forms you have to fill out and then they're gonna hook me up to all these kind of things that I won't have here at home so that's why they get a better read on what I need my hair I had to wash it last night because my hair has to be free from any kind of oils or anything like that because they're gonna stick whatever on my hair and whatever I'm able to film I will show you guys I'll just be honest but my hair looks a mess underneath because you guys know I usually wear the ponytail or I get my hair done or something like that. But I am all natural and nothing's wrong with that. I'm still going to work tomorrow. I work from home. It's from 7.30 tonight till 5 in the morning. So yeah, I'll be able to make it home in time to sleep. But yeah, they gave me the rules of what I can and cannot wear. They said, you know, no sleeping in the nude, which... If they have to tell somebody that, then that means that it's happened before and no silk pajamas and no nightgowns. They want you in like, you know, pants or sweats and then a top. So I'm gonna go pack and I'm gonna bring my laptop and I'm gonna charge my phone because I'm just gonna be there. I should probably make sure my Kindle is charged as well that way. I can have options of 
being in the hospital there. So, all right, so I have my pajama pants here, toothbrush and toothpaste, and get everything ready in this bag. All right, so mostly everything is in here. I got my pair of glasses. I'm just gonna bring my wallet, not my full purse. Then I have my Carmex right here. Um, I have my keys and then my laptop is charging, but I'm gonna use it. And then I'm charging my phone and my Kindle. I'm, I'm pretty much done. I'm only bringing this because the shirt that I got on, I'm just gonna sleep in this because I don't know, I just feel more comfortable doing it that way. Especially because I'm gonna be watched, you guys. The minute they hook me to those machines, the camera is going to be on. So I don't know, I just feel like having a regular shirt, I'd feel more comfortable. I don't know, weird, but that's just how I feel. Oh, I feel, my, I feel like my gray hairs are just standing out. Anyway, they also said to make sure I eat dinner before I go there because there's no food or drink allowed in the sleep lab. And I'm glad they told me that because I actually was planning on bringing food from home and eating there because I don't know, I just was. So it's about five o'clock now and I'll eat around six. So yeah. Okay, it's almost time to go, but y'all, I almost walked out of the house with my slippers on. Yeah, they're that comfortable, but <laughs> let me change my shoes or put my shoes on. So I made it here. I have my heater on because it's freezing and there's a lot of cars in the parking lot, but I'm hoping that they have someone walk me to the my car when it's over at 5 a.m. Even though it's very well lit, it's gonna be cold, it's gonna be dark. It's supposed to be there at 7.30 or in there at 7.30. And it's seven o'clock now. But I came early because I didn't know how parking was going to be. And I know I'm not going to be the only one there for this or here for the sleep study. So yeah, I just wanted to get here early just to make sure everything was okay. My hands are dry and I didn't bring my purse with me where I have my lotion. And normally I have lotion in the car, but this is empty. So I'm just rambling. I don't want to do this, y'all. I really don't. I'm so creeped out at the fact that somebody is going to watch me sleep. Here I am and I'm actually going to go on that side over there um yeah all right see you guys on the inside i changed spots because i seen this so yeah okay i'm here and there's another bed over there it's funny because cheyenne said i wish i can go with you but yeah but here's the room and that's the camera up there that will be watching me and see we have all these wires and things so yeah, I'm already in my pajamas and she's gonna be in shortly to hook me up. Hi guys, so it's 6 a.m. I'm back at home. It wasn't a vlog fail. I literally could not vlog. I will explain more later. I actually just got out the shower cause I had those things, wires all over me and I had to wash my hair again. They had some sticky goo stuff that they had to put in my head on my scalp to measure my brain waves, so yeah. Anyway, I don't start until seven, but let me just wake up and then I'll come back later and tell you guys the full story because it was interesting. Well, hello, it is after work and I done did what I needed to do with my hair to get it moisturized because y'all. Okay, so let me try to tell this without taking forever, which I probably will still take forever. So I get there and of course you guys see me give the little quick view of the room, the camera, and all of those wires, which I think she said there were 30 or 40 of them and every single one was on me. When she came in, right? So, okay, so I get there and I'm about 15 minutes early and she said, well, you're early. And I said, I know, but it's okay, I don't mind waiting. So she said they were, in the process of you know the staff change and so then my appointment was 7 30 right 7 31 brought me to the room 
told me that she'll be with me shortly, but to go ahead and, and they didn't play no games, go ahead and unpack and, well not unpack, but you know, go ahead and put my pajamas on and get ready for bed even though I wasn't going to bed at that time, right? So I'm thinking, okay, well, it's fine. I, you know, brought my laptop and my phone. I have my phone and, you know, I brought my Kindle in case I needed it. And she had a weird look and I'm like, mm, okay, yeah. So she told me where to put my things. I put my pajamas on and that's when I filmed that portion of the video. And then when she came in, she started bringing all this stuff with her and telling me what was going to happen. They were going to put things all over me. I had wires like on my legs i had wires on my neck face here in my hair like the back of my head and the top and i'm going to show you guys a picture and i look crazy as ever so i'm going to show it really quick <laughs> even though i know you guys could pause and look at it but i'll show you guys the picture this is what i look like once everything was said and done when she got everything together okay so got your laughs out she told me to sit down in a chair and she was putting those things on me and you know we were just chit chatting you know she was telling me about her family and her daughter how long she's been there and how long she's been doing what she was doing so we're just conversing back and forth and you know she'll leave out to go get something and whatever and she'll have me sit for a minute and i'll be on my phone scrolling you know she'll go help out another patient because I guess last night she had two patients. By the time she was finished putting everything on me, it was like 8.55. And I'm thinking, she told me to sit on the bed and I'm thinking, okay, well, I'll pull out my laptop or whatever and I'll start doing, you know, just winding down, relaxing until maybe about 10, 10.30. That's what I'm thinking, right? So then she brings the mask and has me try it on a different size mask. They told me my mask size should be large like a long time ago because its nose is not small. So I was going off of that, right? She told me, she said, absolutely not. Large is for usually men with the wide jaw. And she said, out of her years of doing that, she rarely ever sees a woman with a large mask. That could be one of the reasons why you're having a lot of leakage with the air at night and I'm like oh my goodness so she brought the medium and it fits so much better it was just a whole lot less cumbersome if that makes sense okay so she put the mask on and she started up the machine and no she didn't start the machine up yet she put the mask on and she put the hose on and then she walked out she said I'll be right back and that's when I grabbed my phone and snapped that picture right so then she came back and I'm thinking she, I don't know, she's going to do whatever, but I'll still be able to relax. And I said, you're turning it on now? And she said, yeah, um, we want you to get about a full eight hours. So it was nine from nine to five. That's eight hours. So yeah, I pretty much had to go to sleep right away. And I didn't go to sleep, right? I didn't actually fall asleep right away because I'm in this strange room. Yes, I was tired, but I didn't have my fan. And I don't know, it was just, I'm not home. So I think it took me about 30, 45 minutes to fall asleep. When I get the actual report, I will find out how long it took me. When she had the lights off, you seen the red light of the camera come on. And when she walked out, she told me, we're going to run some tests. When she left the room, the room was dark. And she said, close your eyes and look left and right five times and just different things. And I think that is... Maybe like the machine measuring my, or seeing how, you know how when you sleep, your eyes move and whatever she told me to do up and down. Then she told me to hold my breath for 10 seconds and which, what else? Um, move my feet around. So ran all those tests and then she said, okay, if you need me, I can hear you. So just, you know, or wave your hand and I'll see and I'll come in. So she said, good night. I'm like, good night. So I'm just laying there like, okay. So I'm like, let me just, go to sleep that way I can get this over with they can get what they need or whatever and a few times she had to come into the room because one time I guess I turned over and unplugged the hose <laughs> and I started noticing because I felt like I was suffocating because there was no air coming in that mass I was on the verge of taking it off and she came in reconnected it and I scooted over to 
the, not to the edge of the bed, but closer to where the machine was. And then what else? At one point she said, did you need anything? And I'm it, sleep, right? But I heard that because it's like a huge microphone, I don't know, in the room. And I'm like, no. And she was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And so she came in and um, another time and said that there was a leak on the mask. And so I adjusted it, fixed it, and everything went back to normal. But all in all, it wasn't that bad. Oh, let me back up. So when they were putting those things on my scalp, um, she, I seen... I don't know what to call it, some kind of white goo that she put on and I guess it had to hold those electrodes and I'll show you guys the picture again and it, I think I had one here and one here. So just imagine that like through the back of my head, hold on. Okay, so the battery was flashing so y'all already know. Anyway, so those little, do you call them electrodes? I don't know, but they were like just in random spots in the back of my head and I would say it was about maybe five or six of them. I think I had one here, one behind each of my ear and the other one here and then it started at the top of my head. I heard about this because I was, I followed this girl on TikTok who has sleep apnea and she gave her experience so I knew what to expect. So she told me when I get home, when I wash my hair, don't try to comb it out. And this stuff is very, what, what's the word? It's very tacky. It's very sticky. And she said, if you try to comb it out, it's not just going to come out. It's going to stick to your hair. So when you wash your hair, just make sure it's, you know, hot water, you know, and then it, then it could just comes out, but you just got to let the water run through it. So the night goes on five o'clock, like clockwork. She comes in and okay, so we're all done. And you know, she unhooked all the wires from me. And of course, I'm like, Ugh, you know, whatever, trying to wake up because, you know, she woke me up out of a dead sleep. And I'm like, okay, let me get ready and go home. So took all the wires off. Now I know why the reason she looked at me when I said, oh, I have my phone and my laptop, whatever. She was probably thinking, girl, you ain't gonna have time for that. So yeah. So anyway, I signed some more papers. And then she said I should have my results um, within a couple of weeks from my doctor. And then once I get my results, they will set the machine that I have to exactly what I need. But she said from her experience, now that I have my proper mask size, that it's going, it's going to cut out a lot of the issues I've been having. So... Yeah, can y'all, I mean, all them wires, and I think I took a picture of the wires that I'll put up again, but all these wires that you will see hanging on this door, every single one was on me. Every single one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's why I thought I was going to be able to blog a little bit more or whatever, but no, I, I literally could not because when she was done, it was time to go to sleep, so... Yeah, you guys. Yeah. Um, and I'll keep you guys updated on what the doctor says when I know you'll know. So when I came home, I did stay up because there was no reason to go to sleep again or whatever. And I immediately got in the shower because I'm like, I just felt icky because my body felt like I had adhesive all over. And at first I was just going to wait until I got off work and then shower and do my hair then. I could not, I don't know, just that feeling of that stuff in my hair. It just felt so gross. So yeah, I had to wash my hair early this morning and then I just made some coffee and just scrolled on my phone, did some devotionals and waited until I had to clock in. You guys are caught up. Yeah. I'm just going to relax. I have a few things that I need to get done. If anything else happens or if I think of anything else, I'll come back. Mm -hmm.